This is Dan York and I'm here at uh, the UNH Interoperability Lab in Durham, New Hampshire and r before me is Robert Sparks who's the coordinator of the SIPIT event. So um, hello Robert. Greetings. So tell us a little bit about uh, who are you, what do you do here? So this is our 25th SIPIT event. It's an interoperability test that I've helped coordinate for several years now for the SIP forum. It's an opportunity to bring everyone who makes SIP together for a week and have an engineering make it break kind of test. The object is to find bugs in implementations and find bugs in specifications. Somebody finds something that doesn't work, they fix it, they don't have to deal with that again. If it turns out that it's not working because the person they're testing with disagrees with them about what the spec says, then there's probably something wrong with how the spec is saying what it's saying and we can take that back into the IETF and clarify it. Once in a while we find real problems in the specification through active testing, the uh, fork loop fix, the dynamic amplification of traffic um, that we captured in, in a recent RFC out of the IETF was an example of the kinds of things that we find at SIPIT that are real errors that we go back and fix through the standardization process. So for the SIP forum, I'm a member of the board of directors and I chair the test event working group. And the SIP it is the primary activity of the test event working group. We hold them twice a year, we move them around the planet, we do Asia, North America, Europe, then return to Asia, come back to North America and Europe. As I mentioned before, this is the 25th. They're very well received, very well attended, even in times of economic downturn like what we're dealing with now. Yeah, I noticed a lot of folks here are testing, doing all sorts of things. Yeah, and it's always it's a very exciting event. The, uh, the level of energy that you achieve when you move beyond just having the kind of lab testing that you tend to do back at your company at home when you work with only one other person at a time um, pales in comparison with what you get when you have five or six different folks turning the knobs at the same time. You discover combinations of knobs that you would have never run into if you were in more control of exactly what the scenario was going to be like ahead of time. And it uncovers interesting problems that we can take back and solve in the standards process. Now, what kind of vendors typically come here? We get a, the complete range of implementations of SIP. The, things ranging from devices that look like telephones or proxies or SBCs, back-to-back -back user agents and gateways, to things that look like speakers that live in roofs and do one-way SIP audio to play what they want, what, what they need to play, to cameras you know, that, that look like <laughs> digital SLRs but are designed to go off into the field and get involved in a two-way communication with an expert somewhere else in the universe. Oh, that's you cool. know, please show me this knob, Turn. let me hear what this knob is, kind of noise this knob is making, kind of diagnostics in the field. So it's, it's a, a wonderful opportunity to see innovation in action when people are just starting to explore what SIP can do beyond just voice telephony. We usually see it here first. Cool. Now, I notice that vendors, you know, don't talk about what happens here. It's, it's a, is it under an NDA or is it a? It's a gentleman's NDA and it's worked very well for us. There's no formal NDA, but there is an agreement when people enter here that they don't talk about what they ran into unless they do so in cooperation with whoever they tested with. If two companies want to go out and say, hey, we tested together and we did just great or we found this problem, they can do that. If they run into an issue with a, a company that wants some time to straighten things out, then that company is going to feel relatively confident that nobody's going to go out and say, hey, I found this, or I beat X. It's not a certification event. It's not a contest. It's a make everything better for everyone in the industry event, and it's been very effective. This is our 25th event, and we've never had an issue. Cool. Now, how does a company get involved if they want to you know, participate in the next one? So watch www.sipit.net for announcements for registration for the event. Um, it's a very good idea to participate on the SIP implementers list hosted at columbia.edu and any of the uh, um, IETF standards development lists that are, are pertinent to whatever your product is wanting to do. Um, once the announcement for registration goes out, you sign up for the event, you get a lot more information ahead of time about how to participate in the event. There is some information for first-time SIPIT attendees, and anybody can see it any time, on the main SIPIT website at www.sipit.net. 
Cool. And then there's additional information that goes beyond the SIPIT for SIP forum activities at www.sipforum.org. Great. Now, you've been doing this, you said, for 25 sessions. What have you kind of trends or th changes have you seen over the, all that time? When we started out, the focus was on getting basic telephony to work, to re replicate the experience of a phone call, which was never really what SIP was all about. It was just one of the first really Use easy cases. things to do with it. Um, things have evolved past that dramatically. Sure, we get new implementations that come in every time, and, and everybody makes sure that basic telephony still works. But we get to see folks moving into far more advanced communication scenarios, actually finding new ways for people to communicate effectively. And it's really invigorating to watch how SIP makes that easy for people to realize. That's cool. So when's your next SIP it? The next one will be next spring. It will be in Europe. I don't have a host to announce yet. Hope to have one very soon. Watch www.sipit.net um, for that announcement, and that will get the venue as well. Great. It'll probably be in the April time frame. Great. Well, uh, what's next for you? <laughs> oh, I'm just staying with it. I'm very busy. I've very recently become even more active with the IETF, taking on the area director role for the real-time application infrastructure area. The uh, That's a, a very dynamic area with a lot of, of very strong participants and, it, and the AD position is, is quite challenging, but I'm enjoying it. It's, a, it's a, a great learning experience. It's a lot of fun getting to work with a lot of really good people. Great. Well, I uh, wish you the, all the best with the rest of this uh, week and uh, thanks for your time. All right. Thank you very much.